This is the Decoding Obesity Podcast, where we simplify, demystify, and decode obesity, helping you lose weight and feel great. Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Dr. Avishkar Sabharwal. So gear up for a fascinating journey through this ever-evolving field, and let's see what we find. And please remember that the thoughts and opinions on this podcast do not constitute medical advice. Don't forget to visit our website, www.decodingobesity.com, for show notes and more info. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Decoding Obesity podcast. Today, we will be talking about how COVID-19 affects obesity and vice versa. I hope all of you are staying safe uh, in this pandemic. Almost all of us have been affected by COVID-19 in one way or the other. It is on the downturn in some of the states here, but some of the states like Utah, Florida are seeing an upswing, as well as some other countries like India and Brazil, which are really getting beaten down. This pandemic has drastically changed our lives and has definitely disrupted our day-to-day routine. We all know that daily routine is essential in maintaining a successful weight loss, and even the slightest disruption can tip the balance in the wrong direction, literally. I'm sure people who suffer from obesity can recall specific points in time when um, something changed in their uh, daily routine, and that caused them to gain their weight back. So it is very, very important to have a daily routine that does not change. Several studies have observed that obesity is not only associated with more severe form of the COVID-19, but they also show that people who are younger and suffering from obesity may have a more severe disease. There are several reasons that have been proposed for this. These include uh, other comorbidities that come along with obesity like diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease. Um, The other side of this is that people who have obesity may have some respiratory dysfunction like obstructive sleep apnea. Before COVID-19, everyone had a set routine of getting up, getting ready, going to work, coming back in the evening. Kids were going to school. People were going to gym or outside for their exercise if they were exercising. But all of this changed with the pandemic. Now people are staying home. There is no rush to wake up. There is no routine. The gyms are closed. People are scared to go outside. Kids are at home. And now there is this added burden of homeschooling these kids, which suddenly increases the stress. Some people have been laid off or furloughed, which definitely adds to their stress as well. So during these stressful times, we all seek comfort foods. I think all of us can recall one specific comfort food that we always go for when we are stressed out. And these foods are usually high carb high fat foods which are obviously not healthy. When people are going through stress, they feel that they definitely deserve these comfort foods. With everything that is going on, with cities and states being in lockdown, some people may be feeling helpless in this situation and may question whether these food restraints are even worth it. Firstly, I want to reassure everyone, this too shall pass. We were very badly hit and now we're seeing the fag end of it. As long as simple precautions are exercised, people should be able to tide over it. Now coming to the issue of weight loss and weight maintenance in this scenario of COVID-19 pandemic. I want to highlight a very, very important point here. We often rely on our comfort foods during stressful situations, but there have been studies that have been done even on these comfort foods. Some studies show that comfort foods do not necessarily alleviate a negative mood any more than non-comfort foods or no food at all. A study done in 2016 showed that just viewing or drawing images of your comfort food, even in the absence of eating, increased positive mood. This is so important for everyone to understand, especially for people suffering from obesity. I think fighting stress is also very important because chronic stress itself is associated with increased risk of obesity. The cheapest stress buster that I can think of is good sleep and exercise, both of which are beneficial in obesity. It is important to make conscious food choices in this high-stress situation we are in because it's easy to lose track of things with so much going on. 
I think people can and should still go out for walks and exercise as long as proper social distancing is observed. And social distancing certainly does not mean that you have to be disconnected from your loved ones. We should definitely be able to use technology to stay connected. If people do not want to go out, there are tons and tons of resources and videos available on YouTube and other platforms about how you can exercise at home. In fact, I remember seeing it on the news a few months ago that there was a person who completed a complete marathon in his balcony just walking from one end to the other. It is important to understand that you can exercise anywhere you want as long as you want to do it. It is more important to find any excuse to exercise than not to exercise during this time. It is going to help you relieve your stress and help you with obesity as well. I hope everyone stays safe and healthy during this pandemic. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next time. This podcast should not be used in any legal capacity whatsoever. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are solely of the host and his guests. They do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of any organization. And that brings us to the end of this show. Thank you so much for listening in. And please remember that the thoughts and opinions on this podcast do not constitute medical advice. Don't forget to visit our website www.decodingobesity.com for show notes and more info.